We are coming to you from Oriole Park at Camden Yards in Baltimore, Maryland, where tonight Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox baseball. It's Paul Canerco, Jose Abreu, Alexi Ramirez in the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Adam Jones, Nelson Cruz, and Buck Walters, Baltimore Orioles. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrelson as we get set to bring you the first of this three-game set and the fifth of this 11-game road trip. As you know, we started off with the first four in Minnesota. We didn't do too well there. They want them all. So tonight, we have a couple of the best, two best home run hitters in the league. But well, we're getting a chance to see two guys at different stages of their careers. We've got Jose Abreu, who's just starting his career, and he's been prolific. Nelson Cruz has been a little better. Edwin Encarnacion leads the major leagues in home runs. Nelson Cruz is second, and Jose Abreu is third with his 21. And we're getting a chance to see home run hitters in a great home run hitters park. Usually the first time Jose sees a pitcher, and he's going to see Wei and Chen for the first time tonight, he hits a home run. We'll have to see if that holds up. And the Orioles decided to take a chance on Nelson Cruz. Got him as a free agent out of Texas. He is enormously strong, loves to hit the ball to right and right center field. And with 23 home runs, he's one of the leaders on this club. He's also driven in 60 runs. And besides that, a good pitching matchup tonight. It's a great one. Chris Sale going to the mound. And Chris Sale's been just terrific this year. He's 6-1. His ERA is more than respectable. It's actually very good. Slider's been good. He throws a changeup about 30% of the time, and he can throw to any count, so these Orioles are going to have to be aware of that. William Chen is one of those guys that you think at first is a soft tosser. He really isn't. He'll top out at 92, 93, but more times than not, his changeup and his slider are his pitches. So a battle of left-handers and a good one in a park that is known for its offense. All right, it's first of three from the house that Cal built. So sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
Indiana Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois, through it all. AT&T U-verse. Find out what's possible with AT&T. Call 1-800-PICK-ATT. Mobilizing your world. And by Ford. Check out America's Precious Lena at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Welcome back to Oriole Park at Camden Yards. It's a beautiful ballpark on a beautiful evening in Baltimore. And let's take a look at these two teams and what they've done this year. Batting average, the Orioles a little bit better runs per game. Well, surprisingly, the Sox better in that department. Home runs, the Orioles have a bunch of home run hitters, stolen bases. The Sox are a faster team. And ERA, the Orioles just a touch better. And the Orioles right in the middle of the race in the East. They come into this one a game and a half in back of Toronto, tied with the Yankees for second place. Let's take a look at how Robin's going to line up our Sox tonight. It's going to be Adam Eaton leading it off with Gordon Beckham in the two spot. Jose Abreu, the designated hitter. Diane Viciedo in left field. Lexi Ramirez at shortstop with Paul Canerco at first. Connor Gillespie at third. Moises Sierra in right field and Tyler Flowers getting the nod behind the plate. The defensive setup and how they'll line up behind Wayne Chen. It's Cruz Jones and Marquez in the outfield with Machado, Hardy, Shoup, and Pierce in the infield. Caleb Joseph behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Wei-Yun Chen. He's from Taiwan on for his 15th start. He's 7-2, and two, his ERA 378. He's got excellent control, as you can see, just 12 walks and 83 in the third. However, left-hand hitters have hit him better than right-handers, which means he's got a pretty good changeup that he uses effectively. The umpires for the game tonight. Rob Drake behind the plate. Alan Porter is at first. Paul Emmel is at second. And Marty Foster is at third. So the temperatures couldn't be better in Baltimore this time of year. And they throw the ball around the infield, which means we're ready to play baseball. And that means I'm ready to throw it over to my play-by-play -play partner, Ken Harrelson. Hi, Stevie. Thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone. And welcome to White Sox Baseball right here on Comcast Sportsnet. So happy you could join us for the first of this three-game set. And before we show you our picks to click, you at home select yours. Adam Eaton will lead it off. Adam comes in hitting at 274 with a homer and 21 knocked in. And the first pitch of the ball game is taken for a ball. Chen, 28 years old, six feet tall, 195 pounds. Outfield bunch for the most part. And the count 2 and 0. And here at Camden Yards, 318 down the right field line, 333 down the left field line, 364 in left center, 410 out there in Dedaway Center, and 373 in right center. He fakes the butt, taking all the way, and a strike. These two clubs met seven times last year, Baltimore winning four of the seven. Machado's got it. And that's out number one. A shattered bat, and you're hitting it to the wrong guy when you hit it to Manny Machado. He's one of the best in the business at third base. And he makes a play rather easily. Hardy having a tough time. I talked with JJ before the game, and he had a bad back. He's starting to get over that, but it has not been one of his banner years, either with the bat, as far as the long ball is concerned, or with the glove. There's Beckham. He has faced Chen seven times, has the one hit, comes in at 268. Our Sox hitting a 256 at club with a 4.39 ERA. What well, a lovely evening. A lovely evening here in Baltimore. You just don't find no. weather with less humidity this time of year in this ballpark. No, it's usually sweltering. <laughs> Jen's slider is better than his curveball. And his straight change is pretty good. 
but against left hand pitchers Gordon Beckham has been very good. Here's the 2 1 pitch. 3 and 1. Sox coming in with a dismal 14 and 23 road record. 21 and 18 at home. 14 and 23 on the road. And there's ball four. And right now, let's check out our picks to click. Command GR, our director and the crew, with Moises. Steve's going with Canerco and Jerry Hanley, Mike Williams, Eric Aldridge. We're going to go with Alexei Ramirez. Also, Roger Blair. Good, good mayor out. So here's a Brayu. Now, feel straight up. That's off the end of the bat. Cues and foul. He's a 270, 21 homers, 57 knocked in. Makes a catch, and that's out number two. Boy, it's amazing. He's having some lunch today on the sidewalk cafe. And I had uh, my socks World Series ring on. The waiter noticed it and said, "Tell me about this Abreu." <laughs> he, he's getting a lot of national love, and justifiably so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I said he's a real deal. So here's Tank. Tank at 245, six homers, 23. Driven in. Scope is playing pretty much up the middle. He's got a very strong second baseman's arm. There you take a look at the defense and I talked to scope before the game and I asked him what his natural position was he says I was a shortstop. But I had to move and he pointed to Manny Machado because Machado was the best shortstop in the league at the time and he's now playing third. Now when you get a shortstop it's a good shortstop not a great one defensively but a good one J.J. Hardy and he's hitting between 20 and 30 home runs a year. It's hard to displace him. No, Machado's done just an outstanding job at third. And Hardy is usually very dependable at shortstop. Yes, that's what he is. That's a good. Good edge. Three and one. Don't help him out. Alexi on deck. Tank has a homer off. Chin, the only one of the guys in the lineup. Big hack. Got a pretty good fastball there, fouled it straight back. You got a man in center field and Adam Jones that can absolutely fly. He's one of the better center fielders in all of baseball. He does a tremendous talent. Yeah, he is a good one. That's pretty good trade they made. I could say they got well the best of that. And there is ball four, and that'll bring up Alexei. Well, it's time to take advantage of some very uncharacteristic wildness on the part of Chen. You come in with only 12 walks and 14 starts and walk two in the first, you should pay the price for that. Alexei hitting at 299, seven homers, and 36 knocked in. Alexei has faced Chen seven times, has a couple of hits. Takes a strike. 
Arkakis and Jones have pretty good arms. Although as deep as they're playing. It'll be tough to throw out Beckham. He's getting a good lead at second base and nobody's paying much attention to it. Very nice stop by Joseph. Caleb is in there for one thing. And that is because he can really catch. He can catch it, call it, throw it, and block it. And that's one thing Buck Showalter insists from his catchers. He doesn't care how much they hit. They have got to be able to throw out base runners. And they have to be able to block low pitches. Well, he had 22 home runs and drove in 97 last year at Bowie. And Alexi just missed that. That could have been a quick 3 0 lead, but it wasn't. About a 30 second of an inch. Meanwhile, after half inning of play, it's our guys nothing and their guys coming to bat. Take Marquecas, Pierce, and Jones at the top with Cruz, Young, and Hardy in the middle, and Machado, Scope, and Joseph rounding it out. The defense, and now they'll line up behind Chris Sale. Vicieto, Eaton, and Sierra in the outfield with Gillespie, Ramirez, Beckham, and Canerco in the infield. Tyler Flowers behind the plate, and our Lexus for swing perfection starting pitcher is Chris Sale. Chris looking for win number seven in this, his 11th start, his ERA of very fine 220. And as you can see, you don't get too many hits off from opponents batting just 177. Nick Marcakis, the right fielder, comes in at 297, six homers, 28, driven in. He's two for five with three RBIs off Chris. First pitch, three hopper, one pitch, one out. Talking about show Walter before the game, he said that their ball club beat Tanaka yesterday because they completely disregarded his splitter. He said they just looked for a fastball, and he said pretty much that's what you have to do with Chris Sale. He said you're not going to hit his slider, you're not going to hit his straight change. You might as well just wait and try to hit a fastball. Well, that's an approach. We're talking about approach rather than mechanics. Well, it's a it's a good approach because his slider when it's right. It's quick breaking and you just don't get much of a shot at it. Well, Buddy Ball and I were talking about that before the game. You've got to, in the major leagues, you've got to cover the fastball. That's if you can't cover the fastball, you can't play in the major league. If you can cover the fastball. And Buddy and I were talking, we both feel the same way about these reports of these young kids in high school and college. Well, he has trouble with breaking. I mean, it's almost comical. Well, just about everybody. <laughs> Does anywhere? Doesn't matter what league there is. I mean, to see that on a, a scouting report, it's, it's almost common. Well, it doesn't tell you much except the obvious. Yeah, exactly. Has trouble with the boy. Pierce has some big power, by the way. And there's ball 
for him. Buddy had over 2,500 hits. And he's, he's, he still couldn't hit the breaking ball. Now everybody's going to hit a hanger. So Pierce is aboard with the walk. And here is Adam Jones. Adam Jones is really starting to heat it up in the month of June. He got off to, for him, not a particularly good start. But he's hit seven home runs in the month of June and starting to swing the bat the way Jones normally swings it. Well, last year he had 285 with 33 homers and drove in 108. Yeah, he's, he's their big man in the three spot. I, I like this guy because he does it. We keep talking about the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings. Well, you're going to face some good pitching from most of the starters. But not like you're going to face in the seventh, eighth, and ninth innings in the close ball game. That's when you're going to see the best stuff they've got coming out of that bullpen. And Adam in the seventh, eighth, and ninth inning is a good hitter. Another thing, buddy and I were talking about, I never had in my career had to face guys in the seventh inning coming in throwing 96, 97, and then in the eighth inning throwing 97, 98, and then in the ninth inning throwing 99, 100. You Most of the time, you're facing the same guy. You're describing the Kansas City bullpen. Yeah. That ball is just killed. And it's 2 0 Baltimore. And we told you that it's been a very hot June for Jones. That's his eighth home run of the month of June. His 14th overall, and he's driven in 47. So, just like that, the Orioles take the lead. Ford home run replay. This ball is down. And Jones goes down and gets it. So whatever problems he had in April and May, he's also gotten the luck here in June as that ball hit the top of the ball, up top of the wall, and then bounded over. So here's Cruz. Well, as hard as that ball is, it's a good thing to hit the top and not. Six inches below because he probably would have pulled on the slats out. As that's out number two. That ball was absolutely murdered by Adam Jones. So that'll bring up Delman Young. Delman has been swinging it pretty well, although he doesn't get a chance to play all that often. He's got just 98 at bats in 35 games. Well, he's 28 years old, and this is a six ball player. He's been a pretty good hitter. He's really hit us hard. He's hurt us. Well, Buck has had a hard time getting him in the lineup with any consistency. Well, Nate Ross tells me that he's a 327 career hitter against us. And I mean, some big base hits, too. There is no doubt that he can do it. There you see what he's done in 83 games, 13 homers, 55 driven in. Loves the ball down and in. Usual see a guy putting up those numbers. And only six club, just 28. Well, the defense has not been particularly good. He had some problems off the field at times during the course of his career, but he can swing the bat. Chris Davis is not in the lineup, but figuring that number one, he's been struggling. He's only hitting 216, and number two, he just as soon not. Load the lineup with more left handers against Chris Sale. That's the fifth home run that Chris has thrown. And I would say, without question, that's probably the hardest hit. If he gets that ball up, it's going to go over the Under Armour sign. So there's a sharp single in the left field. That ball down and out over the plate. And that's the sweet spot for Delman Young. Connor Flowers out there talking with Chris Sale. JJ Hardy. 
hitting at 295, a homer. He's driven in 19. He had his first home run of the year in yesterday's game at Yankee Stadium. He had 25 of them last year. 263, 25 homers, and drove in 76, which is pretty good production from that shortstop. Just hit his first one yesterday, and who would have thought it would be June 23rd here? And Connor Gillespie has none. That's a foul ball. Everybody is so going to have to go back. Although Moises is having some problems corralling it. Alan Porter was right on the line to make the call. High fastball away and Hardy takes it right down the line. And that ball. Hits just foul. Well, Alan Porter, the first base umpire, he's one of the best umpires in the league. Well, I said league, he's one of the best umpires in the major. Yeah, we've had we've had very good luck with him behind the plate. I mean, he calls a terrific game. Yeah. <laughs> very seldom. This is a pitch. Count remains three balls, two strikes with two out here in the bottom of the first. Two run homer by Adam Jones. And Paul looked over in the dugout to ask if they want him on the back or behind. They told him stay on the back, try to shorten the lead. That's right at him. We got a man there, and that'll retire the side. But after one, it is two nothing, Orioles. Light. Sox fans celebrate Christmas in July at the ballpark on Monday, July 21st. Now, the first 1,000 fans to purchase tickets will receive a White Sox ugly Christmas t shirt. Also, there will be holiday drinks for adults at the Comcast Xfinity Zone. 
And Miller Lite Bullpen Sports Bar. Tickets start at 15 bucks for lower level seats. So to purchase, visit whitesocks.com backslash Xmas. Quick 2 0 lead on that two run shot by Adam Jones. So for us it'll be Canerco, Gillespie, and Sierra. Oh, and when the count to Pauly. All he has faced ten seven times has three hits. Two fastballs and Paul probably thought the second one might have been a touch low. Defending the plate right there. Pretty good hack at that one. Let him throw a high fastball by him, and that one at 94. This Baltimore team has been a good defensive team these last few years. They're fourth in the league this year. Seattle number one, Tampa Bay two, the Angels three, and the Orioles under Buck Showalter, fourth in the league. They've committed only 39 errors. Yeah. First rule of baseball. Gotta catch the ball. We know about that. Hey, unfortunately, we haven't done as well as we could have. Baltimore is knocking at the door for his place because they have done it well. If you catch the ball and you got a decent bullpen, you're gonna be there at the end. You're gonna be a contention. Just got a piece of it. He probably wants to when he retires. He's with the Hoove, MLB, or some network, ESPN, somebody to pick him up. As an analyst talking about hitting. That ball is high in the right field. Mark Akers back on the track right in front of Geico. I talked to Paul about his future, what he wants to do when this is over. Asked if he wanted to stay in the game in any capacity. And he said, at first, I just want to sit back. Yep. I just want to observe. I want to see what life is like after baseball. I want to get reacquainted with my family. Not that he doesn't see him quite a bit because they're in Chicago with him, but you know, getting a chance to see your kids grow up consistently, which you don't have a chance to do quite as much in this game, is something that Paul probably is looking forward to. Yes, that's what we were talking about last time. That he's going to be really good. He articulates hitting very well. And a lot of guys cannot do that. They can't do that. You know, just because you have a 2 0 count does not mean it's a 2 0 count. The same every time. It's, it's not. It's situational stuff. Is Gillespie is out for two down. A two zero count with a man on second, nobody out is different than a two zero count with nobody on base. A two zero count with a man on third base with less than two out is a different two zero count with nobody on base. And that's what young hitters have to understand. They have to understand that to be taught that, which evidently they're not. <laughs> 
but he said something that was really interesting and and funny. We were talking about the same thing we just discussed last night about how you would hear about the scouting force saying this guy has trouble with breaking. He said in his whole career, in his whole career, he's never said it in his life or he's never heard anybody else say it. Man, I feel good swinging that breaking ball. <laughs> I can understand that. Very few guys do. I've never heard it in 55 years. Nope. I've never heard one hitter say it. Yeah, it was it's been one of my joys with the White Sox watching him join us. And I told him last night, I said, first two years, I thought you were going to kill yourself. It's been fun watching the maturation process and him coming into being a, just a wonderful, wonderful hitter. Moises checks it up. Moises has faced ten three times, has a couple of hits. Top foul. Outfield playing Sierra straight away. And that ball is slicing and foul. Just tuning in a beautiful night here in Baltimore. Well, what a job they did renovating the downtown Bay Area here. That's shop uh, This used to be a place where after the sun went down, you didn't want any part of. Not anymore. That inner harbor is absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's, it's amazing when it's done. Be no railroad building there. And another foul. Pretty good at bat for Moises. Forcing Chen to throw a lot of pitches, more pitches than he would have wanted to. The tenth of the at bat, the 40th in the first two innings. And still he battles him. High, so a full count. Tyler Flowers in the on deck circle. Chen already has walked a pair and was able to wiggle out of that first inning jam. Got it. Good pitch. He knew it. And we'll go to the bottom of the second, trailing 2 0.
Touching you see Puig and Carlos Gomez are the three top vote getters in the outfield with Aramis Ramirez, Troy Tulowitzki, Chase Utley, and Paul Goldschmidt. The top vote getters in the infield, Yadier Molina, with 2,600,000 behind the plate. I've already named the captains for the team Jose Bautista for the American League, Troy Tulowitzki for the National League. So here's Machado. That's a hang woofing. One pitch, one out. So here's Shoop. Jonathan, 22 years old. 268 minor league hitter. I went down and talked to him before the game. He is a very big second baseman. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. This they is just a, keep getting bigger. This is a strong kid. Uh, well, you know it's it goes hand in hand with everything else. Why would yeah. everybody is getting bigger and stronger, faster? I've been in this game long enough to know. Nothing in this game right now is easier than it's ever been. It's harder than it's ever been. Everything about the game of baseball today right now is harder than it's, than it's ever been. That ball in the center field. We got a man there. When Matt Wieters went down, Buck Walter went looking for a guy who could really catch it and throw it very well. Caleb Joseph has a rocket for an arm, and that's one of the reasons why he's in the lineup. Well, whenever you get in a situation like that, you've got to go for the defense. Yeah, it makes it a lot easier on his pitchers. Well, you know, is that what, what is pitching? The name of the game of baseball is defense, with pitching being the first line of defense. Keep the other team from scoring. Put some top hand on that one. That's a two base hit. That's his fourth two bagger. Joseph gets a hold of a high fastball. This is out over the plate. The sale does not have his good stuff tonight. And Joseph one hops out of the ballpark. He's in scoring position. Out of Nashville, Tennessee. There was a time in the career of Nick Marcakis when he was a big run producer. Those days of going by the boards, he can still hit the ball out of the ballpark, but he's not going to drive in a hundred plus as he once did. Yeah, if you'd have told me later on in his career after we saw in the first couple of years that he was going to be a leadoff hitter, I said you're nuts. Well, he drove in this 112 is, one year. Yeah, this guy was going to be destined to be a third. Fourth place hitter. Changed his stroke. Drove in 112 and 101 in 07 and 09. Changed his approach. Last couple of fastballs at 92 from Chris. Lifts that one into the air, pop up. And that'll retire the side. Get a hit. Well, there's one left. And the two they lead it by two.
Now open at Water Tower Place. The museum combines high-tech interactive experiences with impressive collections of game-used treasures. Come challenge yourself or your friends. That's the Chicago Sports Museum. And Harry Carey's seventh inning stretch. Open at Water Tower Place. It's a 2-0 Baltimore lead. For us here in the third, it'll be Flowers and back to the top of the order with Eaton. And Beckham. Alfield, bunch just a bit. They're bunching most of our guys. And it's just how they view things. Well, who's on the bump for them that night? Well, Cruz is giving him the line. Pretty much conceding the fact that down the line is going to be two bases. They want to take away the alley from Tyler. And then we got other outfields. Give them the gaps. Yeah, I mean, everybody has different charts. Even though you would think the same hitters would be played pretty much the same ways by these teams, they just don't do it. Tyler 241, five homers, 20 driven in, lays off that one. One ball, two strikes to Flowers. First of three here in Baltimore, and then when we finish here, we'll go up to Toronto to finish off this 11 game road trip. We talked about Sherwalter, Walter, and I think he has found the secret. Took a cab ride, was doing a radio show at the time, and they took him to City Field. Which is where the Mets play. The only problem is that he was playing against the Yankees. It was yesterday. And he barely got there before the game. So he said, I didn't have a chance to mess anything up. And our ball club beat Tanaka. One out. That'd be pretty hard to do. You look outside, you look. As long as he's been going to New York. Yeah, you, you look at, I was going to say, he was managed the Yankees. So you look out the cab window and you got to see the difference between Flushing and the Bronx. Well, if you start hearing those airplane engines, you know you're going the wrong field. <laughs> That's exactly right. But when he got there, he mentioned kindly to the driver that he was in the wrong spot. So here's Adam. Down it out. 5-3. Broken bat. Can't get it. So that'll be an infield single for our igniter. And Buck Showalter is going to come out there. He wants a word with Alan Porter. Adam will hit the front of that bag, which he tries to do when he's trying to beat out again. And Buck is looking over in the dugout to see if they want a challenge. The Orioles this year have won six, lost three. Well, they've done a pretty good job when they do choose to challenge. And they're not going to challenge this one. Now, that's a conclusion. So it's a base hit for our leadoff man with one out, man. Here's Beckham. Walk back in the first inning. I mentioned he's one for seven off. Chin. Okay. 
Adam Eaton just extended his streak of reaching base safely in 18 games. He leads Cabrera, De Jesus, Suzuki, and Kendrick. Kurt Suzuki might be hurt by us leaving town, however. The ball hit hard. Get over his head. It will. One hop off the top of the fence. So they're going to have to hold him a third as the relay play. He hits the cutoff man, no problem. Got a boy, Gordon. One out, ducks on the pond. No chance at all for Cruz. This low fastball is tattooed to left field. Puts up the glove as if to fake that he's going to catch it. It doesn't disrupt Adam Eaton at all. No chance to tie up the ball game. They popped up to first base. Ball hit hard. Oh, what a play. Save. One run. Taking a double away. Beautiful play. Well, we tell you that Machado's masterful defensively at third base. And this ball is ticketed for two base hit down the line. Machado able to get to it. Adam Eaton scores easily. RBI number 58 for Abreu, and he was robbed. Gold Glove winner last year was hurt at the beginning of this year. First pitch strike. Viciedo who walked back in the first inning. Yards as Jose Abreu and the Sox look to touch up Ubaldo Jimenez. It's White Sox Orioles Wednesday at 6 on Comcast Sportsnet. And talking with Steve Pierce before the game, he was very excited to face Chris Sale. They're both from Lakeland, Florida. They went to the same high school, as a matter of fact, although a few years apart. And he said he was very anxious to face him and see just exactly what he's got. First pitch strike. He walked and scored. Off the end of the bat on the slider. Center. 
So one out. And that'll bring up Adam Jones. Here's what he did with Pearson Cole. And down and got what appeared to be a fastball. At the top of the wall. That's just about as hard as he can get a ball right there. Yeah, I think when Seattle looks back at the deal that they sent him over here, I'd have a few regrets about that one. Because Jones is going to be around a long time. Yeah, Nick Bedard. Change up. And go. Yeah, that's what he's done career wise, has been pretty good. And they also got Chris Tillman in that deal. Yeah. Probably should be a base hit. If he comes up with it cleanly, he's going to get him. But he dove to his left and then couldn't corral it. That was a changeup. Jones three for three and stolen bases. And here's Cruz who popped up, high pop up to back him. That Bedard trade was Bedard going to Seattle for Adam Jones, Cameron McColo, George Sherrill who was good at the time, and Chris Tillman. What a deal that was. Tillman's the number one starting pitcher, and Jones is their Gold Glove center fielder. Such big power to right and right center. Got that chest going towards the plate. Well, he certainly wore out right and right center field at Rangers Ballpark at Arlington. At the corners, one out. But Nelson Cruz signed his deal with the Orioles, and it turned out to be pretty good for the Orioles. As you take a look at this pretty good pitch rocketed back up the middle. But at the press conference, Nick Marcus led the way and brought in most of the team to the back of the room to let Nelson Cruz know that he paid his debt. For his violation of performance enhancing drugs, and they welcomed him as a team to the Orioles. And Nelson has said that it made a great impression on him at the time. Young fouls to the way right side. To the count. Well, talking to some of those Ranger players, they were really upset that they let him go. He was really well liked and a very productive guy. Good pitch. 
And a good job just to fight it off. Through that fastball on the inside part of the plate. And Young was able to stay alive. He's grounded into three double plays this year, which is not a high total in 100 at bats. And that's up high. Pretty decent numbers career wise against Chris. Tried to sneak that one by him. That one at 94. Change up. He'll grab some bench. Two down. This is a big out. But a mere fly ball could have scored another run. Good change up well in the way and young down on strikes. There's Hardy. He saw a lot of pitches in his bat before lining out hard. Moises Sierra in right field. Pretty good breaking ball there. One of the better ones he's thrown tonight. Keeping it in the vicinity. He gone. He pitches out of it. First and third, one out, strikes out a pair. His first two strikeouts. And we'll go to the fourth, trailing 2 1.
fan photo for a chance to have it shown on our broadcast later in the game. And it's brought to you by AT&T. Fourth inning. And the first of the three game set with Baltimore. Ramirez, Canerco, and Gillespie. Gillespie just missed a three run homer. High towering pop up in the left field. In the first inning. Alexi wants to lay one down. Machado is back at third. First pitch strike on the inside corner. Bottom of the third up in Canada, Toronto leading the Yankees 7 0. That will stay fair. It will. So Alexei is going to start us off with a double. Eleventh double of the year, and that one slicing down the line in right field. And Alan Ford on the call. It's an inside-out swing and a high fastball, and it lands on the line. So Polly, Polly's got a job to do now. Polly flies deep to right field. Over towards the Marquecas and right. Probably trying to go that way. Dolls it back. Ball does hit a fly ball to either center or right. It better have some depth because both of those guys throw very well and they're both very accurate. Marquecas getting set. Alexi's not going anywhere. So that is out number one. And a reminder you can enjoy pierogies and Polish sausages at the ballpark as we celebrate Polish Heritage Night on Tuesday, July 1st. Now the White Sox are offering specially priced tickets to everyone with Polish Heritage, their family, and friends. Tickets start at just 10 bucks for lower level seats. For purchase visit whitesocks.com backslash ph in heritage night. Gillespie went out to left field his first at bat. Takes a strike. J.J. Hardy playing up the middle. Lexi has to be very careful at shortstop. He sees almost right behind him. Lexi not taking much of a lead, and wisely so at this point. One and one. The runners in scoring position counter has been pretty good this year. Chopper. Two out. So it's up to Sierra who had a lengthy at bat before getting called out on third strike. But he saw a lot of pitches, saw everything in Chin's arsenal. 
which hopefully will bode well for him in this at bat. Slider down and in. The bottom just fell out of this one. See Menard's pitch tracks. Good movement. And a little late sink. Good idea. Machado was way back. Two and one. Good pitch just above the pitch before. Softly hit. So we get the lead off double, can't do anything with it. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth trail at 2 1. For a chance to be on beer money. Test your sports knowledge and win some cash too. There's a thousand bucks up for grabs, so don't miss your shot to be on beer money presented by Coors Light. Machado to lead it off. 0 for 1. He hit the first pitch he saw, a bullet right to Alexei. Ball one. Two and zero. Last year, Machado hit 283. He was very healthy. Moving 71 runs on 14 homers. Is still a very young player. Jumps out. 51 doubles. Well, he's got. Well, he's going to be. Pretty big run producer, I believe, before it's over. 
That's unfortunate that incident they had with Mays. Wasn't very smart. No, he realized it, apologized for it. Yeah. That was, was one of the dumbest things I've ever seen. <laughs> but he yeah. apologized. He realized it. Hey, I'm sure Buff got him in that office and told him what was going on. Explained to him that you just don't throw bats at people. That's a good piece of hitting right there. Starting off the inning with that. Soft single in the right field. This fastball is on the outer third. And Machado takes it to right. So he's hit been up twice, hit the ball hard twice. Home run. 268 minor league hitter, but he's just 22 years old. Good arm. Baseball teams love to convert shortstops to second base because you know if they played shortstop their careers, they've got a big, strong arm. Two for two and stolen bases. Just a short lead. Trouble of Buren. First two men aboard. This one pounded down right in front of the plate. It's a high changeup. And Connor was in too close to third to make that play. That'll bring up Caleb Joseph. Tommy Hawk to high fastball, a bullet down in to the left field corner, one hop in the seats for a ground rule double. He does have two sacrifices this year, so the bunt is a distinct possibility. Better than this. You want to force the third baseman to field it. And that's what Scope did. Left him with just the one play. And Connor got it over to Gordon, but the runners both move up 90 feet. Now the infield in. With a good contact hitter. of the newer parks there's not a whole lot of room in foul territory so there is able to stay alive on little pop-ups like the last one. One to nine multi-hit games as he has become 
a leadoff on base hitter instead of a big run producer. Smooth move out there to Corral. Fastball in, but unfortunately, it just barely got the uniform. If you're going to get hit, that's the best way to do it. It's the fourth man Chris has hit this year. Well, here's Pierce. A walk of run scored and a grounder to short. That breaking ball down and in. Time now for AT&T Universe Multiview. Pretty good speed out at second and good speed at first. It's been in the gym. Almost every inning. First, third, and now here in the fourth. Where were the bases loaded? Not bad for Steve Pierce, who's working on five straight multi hit games. Swing at a fastball. Well outside. Just to get a piece of that breaking ball. Good pitch to hit right there, couldn't do anything with it. have a lot of dirt to the fair side of the third baseline. This is not one of them. So when that ball spins off the grass, it dives into foul territory and there's a break. Strike zone right now. That last ball was way high and out of the zone. Chris stayed down the entire at bat, went upstairs, tried to strike him out, and he fouled it off.
Battling at bat, the ninth pitch on the way. to get that slider. Didn't hit it far enough. Out the arm of Sierra. And he made the right move there. If you miss, you got to mess up the line. Don Cooper now wanting a word on how to try to deal with Adam Jones, who's two for two. That first one was a bullet home run. Hit right on top of the left center field fence. Just a line shot. That was a short runway for that thing to land on. <laughs> and that trajectory. Yeah, it's pretty hard to conceive that it was going to hit the top of the wall. But Fine, bro. <laughs> just it's 364 for the power alley, and that's oh, this pretty is, short for it. This is a hitter's. Oh, I mean, this is anytime you get low fences, it is a hitter. I don't care how far they low line drives can go out. Right at the top. Want to know the count? Big rip by Adam. You have to really try hard to walk this guy. He's got nine walks. In 309 at bats. Two and one. So this is a, this is almost a blue plate special for a hitter. Two and one. Bases loaded. Well, what he's done this year. Is swing the bat most of the time. And he made a good pitch. Got that fastball well in on his hands, and Jones couldn't do anything with it except follow it off. I know what you're doing right here. I think Chris should probably use a face high fastball instead of that slider in the dirt. Slow, low, or hard high. There it is, hard high. He gone. He pitches out of it. And we'll go to the fifth.
analysis and follow the action with White Sox in game live on CSNChicago.com. Brought to you by Comcast Business Class. So a nifty job of pitching out of a jam by Chris Sale. He does not have his good stuff. He's given up seven hits. But that two run homer in the first inning is the only runs the Orioles been able to push across and it's still a tight game. Now the thing that settles in with me is the fact that he has not had many easy pitches. No. He has not. He's been in trouble in every inning. Big trouble every inning except the second when he had two out of man a second still. But he has <laughs> not had many easy pitches. He had to reach back and get whatever he's got that last fastball up and out of the zone to a guy who swings at everything was a perfectly placed pitch. Tyler. Most on sale like over the last two starts against the Giants and here Chris has given up 15 hits the last 10 innings. That evens account. Adam Dunn getting the night off for the moment. Good check up right there. Start us off right here. Ball four base hit. Just got out guessed. He took a fastball pretty much right down the middle. Seventh pitch of the at bat. And the best strike that he looked at. So here's Adam. Adam one for two, an infield single, and he scored. So far, if you're just tuning in, big play in this ball game was terrific. Played by Manny Machado at third base. Taking a double and two runs away from us. We did score one. Chad has been doing that since he came into the league, regardless of what he's hitting at any given time. Marty, right over the top. Quickly two out. <laughs> Well, times have changed. It was a ground ball to shortstop, so a scuffed ball was going to be in play. Chen looked at it, just waved it to the umpire and got another baseball. Pitchers used to be able to kill for a scuffed baseball because they worked in the bullpen with it before the game. Well, when you guys had it all over the place, you had sandpaper, you had files, everything else. And sometimes the catcher would help you out, and it would be inadvertent, but it would touch your shin guard, which happened to be sharpened, sharpened a little bit. Yeah, and get to the ball back by accident. You guys had the eyelets and your gloves sharpened. You could do that. I'm telling you, pitcher. They talk about hitters. <laughs> Man, you got all the advantages, and now you get to armor up that. Lead elbow. And you can see there's a few spots on those shin guards that catchers historically, not the ones that we know today, and certainly nobody on our ball club, but <laughs> historically, catchers have had areas where they could occasionally right, scuffle the baseball. Yeah. All right, Fred. Fred <laughs> 
Boy, I say that was easy. One, two, three, and we're halfway home. Trailing two to one. A hitter maintaining his stroke and playing at the All-Star game in the home run derby. I, you know, I, I personally don't like it at all. In fact, I've tried to talk to Big Hurt when they went to Pittsburgh that year when he hit some of those famous 500 footers. Uh, you get caught up in it and, and your adrenaline's flowing. I was in a lot of those, and, and I'll tell you, I would, in retrospect, I would never do it again because you you just feel like you're King Kong. But you're swinging a lot harder than you would normally swing exactly. in any at bat. Yeah, and it took Frank after he got back. It took him a while to get back into his normal swing. And that is a breaking point base hit for Nelson Cruz. He's now two for three. Yeah, but it's tough to tell a guy not to do that because it's such a it's such a, a, a big fan favorite. I was gonna say it's become a gigantic event. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, and I think that's the only reason Frank did it was just for the fans. Boy, he put it. He ever put an exhibition? <laughs> wow! Imagine he could have. That was unbelievable. So here's Young. He's one for two with a strikeout. Takes strike one. That's in the whole base hit. Oh, he was worn that hole out against us in his career. 327 coming into the night. Now go up to about 330. He just loves the ball down. And if you throw it down, you're going to get hurt. And this one is down. And the second hit, both of them have been in the sweet spot for Young. And he's been that way since he came in the league with Tampa Bay. He just loves the ball down. And you can throw the ball face high by him. You can throw it by a lot of hitters, but especially him. There's Hardy. He has lined out hard to right and struck out. There's two big strikeouts back in the third. He struck out Young and Hardy with middle second and third. Well, pitchers, most pitchers don't understand who is Dave because they don't hit. How much easier it is to hit a low fastball than it is to hit a high fastball. They just don't understand. You get gravity working for you on something low, and that old saying just dropped the head of the bat. 
That's all Delman Young get on that one. Base hit. So they're going to hold the run. That'll load them up. This is the most hits. Three soft singles. Most hits that Chris Sale has given up in any start this year, and it's in four plus innings. But this one, not hit hard, finds a perfect spot. Slider for Chris tonight, not quite as crisp. And we could tell real early, and I'm sure nobody has to tell a pitcher when it's going to be a struggling night. This is going to be a struggling night for Chris. It has been. So far, he's done a good job of wending his way out of this. And Don Cooper talking over with Robin. He's going to make a trip to the mound as Robin makes a call to the pen to get somebody loose. I think he's going to check on, on just how he feels as we talked about. Every pitch he's thrown has been what you would call under duress yes. in this ball game. He has not had an easy inning. And there have been a lot of shots hit. And also, there have been a lot of soft ones hit like here. All three of these are broken bat. Little ground ball by Young, a little soft ground ball finds a hole by Hardy. Some days not your day. That's that being it. said, Chris has done a good job to this point What's of the, minimizing the damage. What's the difference in this and a hitter going 0 for 4 hitting four line drives? Some days are just not your day. Yeah. Well, Don has had his say. And it looks now like the bullpen is going to start to work. And it's Javi Guerra. I'm glad to see somebody up in that bullpen. When you go into the fifth inning, and every pitch has been pedal to the metal, so to speak. Even the changeups, you've been having to work to throw those. We're with the bases loaded for Manny Machado. Not very good to this point. But he's still a very young player with a huge upside. All right. Time. They get Cruz one out. Kenner only had the one play that made sense, and that was to cut down the lead runner. I'm not going to get two on this. Cruz doesn't have a whole lot of speed, as you can see, but he wasn't going to outrun that play anyway. Okay, take your time, boys. Take your time. Oh, up. yes! And he pitches out of it. We'll go to the sixth, still trailing by one. Mercy.
Arizona. Sox, pick seven and pick 14 plans let you select the games you want, including great matchups, promotions, and fireworks nights. So, 312 674 visit whitesox.com. Bases loaded, nobody out. And got out of it. Get out of it. Well, Chris Sale is doing a high wire act, but it's been very effective. So here's Brayu. He has popped the first, then he was robbed of extra bases and two RBIs on a brilliant play by Machado. That ball was scalded down the third baseline. But he did pick up one RBI, and that was number 58. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Adam back. State Farm territory. Looks up. This ball game is tied at two. You can put it on the board. Yes. El Canyon. Up on. 22nd home run, 59th driven in. That ball got up in the air and just kept on going. I think that when it came off the bat, Adam Jones thought he had a shot at it. As it turned out, that was long gone. When it came off the bat, J.J. Hardy broke back. <laughs> it looks like a high fly ball. But the big man can put a charge into him. And that ball just kept on going. Jen gives up his 12th home run of the year. That ties a game of two. Tank has walked and gone into third. One and two the count. First of a three game set. There's a shot base hit into the gap. Nobody's going to be able to cut that one off. So a good at bat right there. For Tank. Picks up. His 18th two bagger. That ball was down and well out of the strike zone. And Diane just went down and got it. Slider. To his liking. And that's a go ahead run in scoring position with nobody out. So here's Alexei. He's one for two. He just missed hitting a three run homer in the first inning. Then he doubled leading off the fourth, and we couldn't do anything with him. Boy, that was a majestic home run. Just kept on going. Yeah, when the big boy hits him. Doesn't matter what part of the ballpark he hits him to. Well, that's one like you would see a Harmon Killebrew or a Mickey Mantle. I mean, just majestic. Dave Kingman could hit those majestic Almost as high as they are far. Pretty good pitch right there. Good pitcher's pitch, a fastball up and out of the zone. Not too much he's going to do with that one. Huh? A two two tie here in the top of the sixth inning. Tim 
Machado. You can still vote for Sox All Stars. Abreu second behind Cabrera of Detroit and Alexi second behind Derek Jeter. As you can see, Abreu a distant second. But Alexi, although he most likely is not going to catch Derek Jeter, is pretty close. And he's well ahead of J.J. Hardy of these Orioles. As well he should be. Nobody in this league has played better at shortstop. And Alexei. So here's Pauly. Pauly 0 for 2 twice. He's going out to right field once trying to get Alexei over to second as he led off the fourth with that double. One ball, one strike to Canerco. Beautiful ballpark on a gorgeous night. At the end of June in Baltimore. Usually very humid here, not so this evening. That ball hit in the right field. That's a can of corn for the Greek. The tank will tag, move into third, two down. And here's Gillespie. He's going out to left and grounded out softly to first. Sox trying to break a four game losing streak. Going to Minnesota, start off this 11 game road trip. He could have busted me. And really going to lose four. No, I couldn't. I couldn't imagine that with the Twins pitching. No, not with who we're running out there. Just, I mean, you could just bust it. Connor's been pretty good with runs in scoring position this year. He's got a chance to give the Sox the lead. As Chen is closing in on a hundred pitches, and the Oriole bullpen has started to work. Right there by Joseph. So a trip to the mound. Dave Wallace. Dave Wallace, their pitching coach. They also have Don Cheedy, who helps him. Dave Wallace has been around a long time, and he's a very, very astute pitching coach. Webb is up in the pen. That's Ryan Webb. King size right hander, 6'6, 245. <laughs> they just keep getting bigger. Yeah. bigger. Pick him up. Or how about a wild pitch? There. That was it. That was the one. I don't think the message from Dave Wallace was throw it right down the middle, maybe he'll take it. But that was the end result. And there you look at the numbers. That's keep slicing. Keep slicing. It's safe. So Tank scores, and we lead it 3 2 on the double by Gillespie. Yes. Oh boy. 
Abby at number 27. It was a good effort by Cruz. He's not a great outfielder, but he gave you the big effort. Well, he gave you a great try right there. He had the ball for the moment in the glove, but unlike football, the ground can cause a fumbled play. And that's what happened. So that's going to be it for Chen. And as he walks out, we'll step out and be back after these messages. That 110 as our Sox take on the Mariners. Also, the first 10,000 kids ages 13 and under will receive a White Sox kids jersey presented by Aquafina. So, for tickets, call 866 Sox to Visit whitesox.com. We've got a new pitcher coming in the ball game, and it is Ryan Webb. On for the 33rd time, he's been pretty good. 2 and 1, the ERA, 248. Only eight walks in 32 and 2 thirds. Struck out 25. Came over. As a free agent last year he was with the Miami Marlins where he was two and six but his ERA was a fine 291 and he appeared in 66 games. And the Orioles thought enough of him to give him a two year contract. So he does exactly what his father did play in the major leagues. Hank Webb. Pitched in the major leagues for the Mets and the Dodgers. So here we go. Moises 0 for 2. Consider all the trouble Chris Sale has been in to have the lead at this point is not exactly miraculous, but it's pretty close. Well, they've stranded eight <laughs> through their five innings of offense, and we've stranded three. So, if you strand eight in five innings, you've been under duress. Those of you who just joined us, Larry and his crew building a little package to show you some of that dress. Tops that one foul and count one and two.
Jazz got a piece of it. Good job of defending right there. Pretty good sinker, low and away. Too close to take. They stayed alive. He's yeah, seen a lot of pitches tonight. Yeah, that was a hanging slider inside. Webb was fortunate that it hung far enough inside that the Moises couldn't get to it. We come up with a pair and we'll go to the bottom of the six leading three two. Speed action replays, and it's Chris Sale getting out of a jam. Steve Pierce flies out to right field. Bases are loaded. And in the fourth inning, Adam Jones strikes out to end the inning. Now, the fifth inning, he loads him with nobody out. A little chopper. Andy Machado with a force out. And then the ground ball double play. Scope grounds into a 4 6 3. Chris Sale out of the inning and then some exuberance, as you would expect. Joseph, Caleb Joseph, a double on the sacrifice bunt, a beauty. We'll eat it off here in their half of the sixth inning. First pitch strike. Those two jams were in the fourth and the fifth, and Chris got out of both of them. Still a jam in the third, first. Yeah, this has been pretty tough. Uh, by far, his toughest. In the meantime, he has the lead, and he's had 95 pitches. Well, we talked about it so often. The fact that if you got to have your good stuff and your good control every time you go out there, you're not going to win a lot of major. Well, Chris has learned to win with less than his best. We saw that two years ago in Texas. That was the defining moment for me to understand this young man knew what he was doing out there. That night. So much in this game is not being afraid. Not being afraid to strike it. Not being afraid to get. Throw a fastball down the middle. Not being afraid to throw a strike. Not being afraid to. That's so much a part of this game. It's actually more of a part than the other. 
fact, I was just reading a piece by Van Osmus in his rookie year of managing. He said the thing that really struck him is the fine balance of handling that bullpen. That's the toughest thing for any manager. Well, it's first priority. A young today. manager. First priority today. And Tim Leland told him, don't be afraid to lose a game. And that's something that's not talked about hardly at all. Managers today have to know when to eat a ball game to save that bullpen. It's just that something. Now, he's not a manager, but somebody got him. That pitch has popped up. Back in trouble. And that's one of Boy. They had three softies last inning and another one right here. Well, the only good part of it is that that didn't come last inning or the inning before with the bases loaded. So Joseph, perfect night. Gets it off the end of the bat and couldn't have thrown it out there any better. Gordon couldn't get to it. Nor could Eaton or Sierra. And Harvey Garrett continues to throw in the Sox path. So here's Mark. Mark Hankus. That Osmus was talking about when Leland said, don't be afraid to lose a game. And that's what it boils down to. Managers Day for the first time they've got. Put, are putting in a uh, position. Because of the bullpen being the strength of your ball club. Or the weakness of your ball club. Because you got to. You got to eat a game every now and then. And you're going to try to win every game, but you got to win the. You don't have to win every battle, but you got to win the war. Well, that's why a couple of performances this year, Scott Carroll, have been so important because he's come in after whatever starter has had a tough time and pitched the rest of the way without eating up the bullpen. So Johnny Danks does not know yet that he has. A brand new appendant. There he goes. And of course, Alejandro would never do that. But for some reason, John believes it was him. I would say, Yo Garcia. And there's a ground ball. We got one and rack him up. So quickly two out. Another well timed double play ground ball. And no chance at all for Joseph who. Tried to get a piece of Ramirez but he was so far off the bag if he did indeed go after him that would have been interference. Pierce. Had an extended at bat before popping up to right field in the fourth. Threat of the gun of Morsa Sierra kept that one from scoring. <laughs> Biggest thing for outfielders over not throwing out guys, but the intimidation of the arm and then keep guys. Going from first to second. But we got a man there right in front of the 410. And that was Chris just looking at his Steve Pierce.
Our Sox take on Robinson Cano and the Mariners. Now the first 20,000 fans ages 21 and over will receive a White Sox tailgate flag presented by Miller Lite. Also enjoy our Independence Day celebrations and post-game fireworks presented by Miller Lite. It's not just a good time, it's Miller time. Miller Lite, official beer of your Chicago White Sox. WhiteSox.com or 866-SOX-GAME for tickets. There's a Sox family. And a very small Sox fan. Well, here in Minnesota and Kansas City, we always have a lot of Sox fans. It's a wonderful place to come for a three game series like this, or four game set, as is Kansas City, as is Minnesota. Amazing how I many, when I walked over from the hotel, amazing how many Sox fans were outside. They're averaging. Maybe they are. They say they're averaging 31,101. They got a pretty good team, and they have recaptured their fandom. Well, a lot of them. Boy, this used to be a place they had a fan. Fanny in every seat. There's a good way to start. So Tyler. Now one for three. And here's Adam. Adam one for three with a run score. Yeah, this was years and years and years and years. Great, great franchise. That's poked out in the center field. Corn for Jones. The one out. Gotta bring it back. Him. He's one for two. A walk, a double. That was his 14th two bagger. And a grounder to first. Game two tomorrow night. Second town against Miguel Gonzalez, 30 year old right hand. Game will be over WCIU. That's way low in the world. And then on Wednesday night, back in the West League against Ubaldo Jimenez. That game right back here. Comcast Sportsnet. Hit run on. There are the probables. And as you can see, Ubaldo Jimenez has really struggled this year. Saw him come in after his bullpen today. Trying to work out his mechanical difficulties because he's got a lot of moving parts. It's one of the reasons for that two and eight record. Taking charge like he should. Well, Hardy called for it and was going to take that ball up until he heard the voice of Nelson Cruz call him off and then he peeled away. And this is what tied it up. Into the bullpen. Number 22. Tower fly ball. Takes a strike. And after Wednesday's game, we go up to Toronto where we're going to run Rienzo, Dance, Sale, and Quintana out there. They're going to run Hap, Dickey, Stroman, 
and Mark Burley to the bump. Count evens at one to a break. Lind is back in the lineup for Toronto. Reyes is back in the lineup. Batista, however, tonight he is not in the lineup. That's the pitch he's got to lay off of. If you will learn it when he does, it's going to be awesome. After seven up in Toronto. Blue Jays leading the Yankees 8 1. Adam Lind is having quite a game. Two for three with four ready. That's a pitch he's got to the one out of They do have a shift on with scope on the third base side of second. A full count. Attack on deck. Going to fall for a base hit. So Tyler was on the move. He's going to round third. He'll score on a double by Bray Unis. A 4 2 Sox lead. Jose well, didn't hit this ball hard. That being said, they've been playing off the line and taking away the alleys all night. But when you do that, it's tough to get to the ball in the corner. Cruz doesn't have very good speed. Tyler does for a catcher. And it's a two run game. Uh, number 60 knocked in. Don't stop now, boys. Come on, Tank. He's one for two with a double. And there is a foul ball. Softly hit. Fouled away up a tank souvenir. A lot of extra base hits tonight. Six of the eight for extra bases. Here's a chopper to hopper. Pick up one, seventh inning stretch, we lead it by two.
for Chris Sale. He goes six innings, gives up 11 hits. That's the most he's ever allowed in his major league career in any start. Couple of runs, one walk, three strikeouts, and he was a magician tonight because he wiggled out of some tremendous jams, and he finally gives way to Javi Guerra. Garrett comes on for the ninth time. He doesn't have a record. He does have a 238 ERA. 10 strikeouts in 11 and a third. And as you can see, left handers not doing anything with him. Surprisingly, right handers with a 360 batting average. And he's going to face six, seven right handers in a row if he stays around that long. And Tyler Flowers is going to come out with this. Set of signs as it's going to be Jones, Cruz, and Young to face him here in the bottom of the seventh inning. The Sox on top, four to two. And Jones with that two run homer in the first inning. And also an infield single. Homer was his 14th. He now has 47 knocked in. So a working man's six innings for Chris Sale. Working tonight. man and then some. He missed that home run by Jones. This ball was absolutely tattooed. Kill. Well, it is hard to believe that those are the only two runs Chris gave up. They came after three hitters. And although he was on the ropes after that, he never gave way. Well, he won't he won't. He might get beat, but it won't be because he rolled over. Quit. One competitive guy. And that's out of play. Yeah, that fastball at 94. Pierce hit it there to end last inning. And now Jones gets a high fastball, gets most of it, but that is the absolute deepest part of the ballpark, and it's just a long out. So here's Cruz. He is two for three. in the pen and the Oreo pen also working. It's Brock in their pen. Pretty good hook. Javi Garrett has good stuff. Make no mistake about that. That's especially good the first time you see it and that's the first time Cruz saw it. Well first time we saw him. I mean what was what the question was do the Dodgers have Five guys in that bullpen with better stuff. He got hurt and then 
Maybe just wasn't healthy with him. Their loss is certainly a good man in our bullpen. He gone. Two curves in a row. This one stays up high, but still biting. Cruz can't get to it. Well, you know, it's that old saying, he has trouble with a breaking ball. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Young can't get it. He's two for three. Two singles in the hole between third and short. Count nothing in two. 95 and 96 right on top of one another. Young couldn't pull the trigger on either of them. Well, Matt Lindstrom was coming out of that pin, 95 and 96. When he hurt his anchor. Nate Jones said he's feeling a lot better. We get those two horses back. Our bullpen is going to be in terrific shape. Foul tipped. I think we probably have a little better shot of getting Nate back earlier than Matt. So hopefully that back is completely healed and he gets ready to go. That curve ball. He just fought that pitch off. Had no other choice. That ball was going to hit him if he didn't hit it first. It just, he just. This is the get off me ball swing. <laughs> I might have hit him right in the thigh. Swing the bat like this, he's going to have to find some playing time. That that ball didn't break at all. This came in, kind of settled in the middle of the plate. And Young's third hit of the night is a rifle double into the corner. Well, that's what he's done against us. You know, if we made decent pitches on him, we got him. But every time we made a mistake, got his zone, so to speak, he hurt us. Get that batting average well up above 300. And Don Cooper coming out now to talk with Javi Guerra. And he's hitting over 330 against us in his yep. career. The old saying is show me a good mistake hitter and I'll show you a star. Well, he's going to see a few. Just have to hope that you get a couple in a night. And now Rob Drake ambling out to the mound to try to break it up. For J.J. Hardy. JJ one for three. They now have 12 hits on the evening. Makes a strike.
a pretty good hook there. That was not a roller. Now this one had some bite on it. And I think Tyler Flowers got crossed up because the way he went after that one, he wasn't looking for that pitch. Throws one to move that run over to third base. That puts you in a positive frame of mind. Well, it means if you can throw a good hook, you'll probably get it. He go. And that'll retire the side. We'll go to the eighth leading 4-2. Tweet your photo to hashtag Chicago fan photo for a chance to be shown on our broadcast brought to you by AT&T. And we've got a new pitcher coming into the ball game. That is Brad Brock. 6 6 2 15. They just keep getting bitter bigger coming out of the bullpen. 540 ERA. And left handers have really hurt him. He's given up a couple of home runs in this his 11th appearance. And he inherits a two run deficit. It'll be Ramirez, Canerico, and Gillespie. Brock came over from the San Diego Padres last November. The minor leaguer Devin Jones. Here's Alexei. One for three. A souvenir right side. Let's see with that leadoff double in the fourth. Couldn't get get him in. That's wife. To 
Renee Cherry is a country music singer and songwriter. Two and two. Good take. Full count to Alexi. Is it ninety five? Just misses on the inside corner. Dreaded lead off walk. And Sox fans, join us on Sunday, July 20th, as our Sox take on the Houston Astros at 110. First 10,000 kids ages 13 and under will receive a retro White Sox pennant presented by Prairie Farms and North Star Frozen Treats. So, WhiteSox.com or 866 Sox game for tickets. Joseph has a very strong arm. And Alexi is 12 out of 15 in stolen bases. Pauly three times has gone out. Mark Akis. Closer play at first. Let's get back in. And once again, reminder make your plans to be with us tomorrow night. Same time as A. Quintana against Miguel Gonzalez. The game will be over WCIU. You know, Wednesday night in the finale, Hector Nuesti against Ubaldo Jimenez in that game right back here on Comcast Sportsnet. Nothing in one. He had an RBI double. Just a little flare out there in the left field that Nelson Cruz gave a great effort. Had it and couldn't hold on to it. Just like we promised you earlier in the game, it's Miller time brought to you by Miller Light. And here's our Miller moment, and it is the aforementioned slicing double. This is a slider. And on the slide, Cruz had it for a moment. And the Sox go up on top for the first time tonight. Lexi started to take off, and it looked like he read the pitch out. And went back, and there was nothing that Joseph could do. Oh, well, those two hand signals there. Then watch the line drives. One, 
and to the count. Decently, there he goes. We go to the bottom deep with a 4 2 lead. Pitcher coming into this ball game. It's four to two heading into the bottom of the eighth inning and it's Zach Putnam. Putnam on for the 23rd time. He's two and one the ERA just below two. Got a terrific run out of the bullpen. And he'll be facing the bottom part of the order. Here in the bottom of the eighth. Machado. Scoop. And Joseph. Machado one for three. Takes first pitch strike. Big out. Lexi. And a big out is now. So one out. That will bring up scope. And parents, White Sox baseball camps are open to boys and girls ages 5 to 12 and will be in over 60 communities this summer. So call 630 Play Ball or visit BullSoxAcademy.com to find a camp near you. White Sox summer camps are sponsored by Athletico, by Becker's Pizza, by Comcast Sportsnet, by Suntan Media, and WSCR 670 to score. One thing to bear in mind is they do have Chris Davis on their bench. He did not start tonight. He is healthy. And he has great power, although he hasn't pinch hit all year. 
All he did last year was a 286, 53 homers, and over 138. A nice year. And this year, apparently, what's happened is they're not throwing the ball away from him near as much. They're crowding him inside, and it's certainly limited his effectiveness as he's hitting 216. He gone. Oh, now one for four, two down. Good splitter as the bottom falls out of this one. The scope goes down on strike, so quickly two outs. Here's Joseph. Hard double. Sacrifice bunt and a soft single. He's two for two. Usually what happens when a guy has a big year like that. And it's not nine out of ten times. It's probably closer to nineteen out of twenty or twenty-nine out of thirty times. But next year he's going to get pitched in. They're going to pitch him in. That's what they've been doing. They've been burying the ball inside on him. That's what happens. The better the hitter, the more you got to pitch him in. The better the hitting team, the more you got to pitch him in. And it's very difficult. That's what we we're talking about earlier. There's nothing in baseball easier today than. Everything is more difficult. It's more difficult for pitchers to pitch in because you don't have a lot of umpires who will call the inside strike. As he can't get it, and then if you pitch inside too much to hit a couple of guys, warning <laughs> comes out. <laughs> then you've got problems. Then a big problem. Two and two the count. Stays up in the zone and gone. And just like that, it is a one run game. I mentioned earlier, you hit 22 of them last year and drove in 97 runs at Boyd. Very young career. First time he's had three hits. There's Mark Ankus. He's 0 for 3. Takes first pitch strike. It's Belisario and Downs throwing in the pen. Feel straight up, spread out. There's a chopper, two hopper. So they get a run on the homer by Caleb Joseph, and we'll go to the ninth inning, leading 4-3.
Follow every White Sox game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. You can get live look ins, you can get instant replay, you can get scores, stats, audio, you can get free MLB TV game of the day and more. So download on the App Store or visit WhiteSox.com. Top of the ninth inning, four three good guys. First of this three game set. It'll be Sierra, Flowers, and Adam Eaton. Moises, 0 for 3. Rock was very fortunate to get out of that eighth inning because on a hit and run, Gillespie hit a rocket right at Hardy. Lexi was running and nothing you can do on a hit and run if you line it at somebody it turns into two and that's exactly what happened. There's Tyler, he's one for three with a run score. Looks at ball one. Chris Sale still the pitcher of record in this one. He went six. Gave up 11 hits. That was a career high, but only two runs. He battled his behind off out there. Yeah, this was as struggling a performance as we've seen, and to hold this team, which is a pretty good team, to just two runs is a testament. Going out there with much less than your best and keeping your team in the game. Well, if you're just tuning in, they stranded in the first five innings. They stranded eight. <laughs> one of the few that Rob Drake has missed. Tonight. Yeah, that one could have gone either way and went Brock's way. He said it. He's had a strong game behind the plate. That ball high and to right field. The Greek is there. Two down. So here's Adam. Adam is one for four with a run scored. Takes ball one. Was they can tell against McGill Gonzalez tomorrow night in that game over WCIU. Wednesday, Hector Nwesi against Ubaldo Hernandez in that game right back here on Comcast Sports Net. And then off to Canada for the finale of this road trip, a four game series with the very offensive minded Toronto Blue Jays. They can hit. You get your bone adjusted. Okay. I did. Or well, if you don't, <laughs> you make some goals. No, I shifted my account onto you. That fit, that would surprise <laughs> me. <laughs> that would not surprise. Me. Yeah, but I did get a huge surprise one year. Got the, your line. Got the <laughs> full bill. Of I called him up. I said, "Well, this can't possibly be mine because I said, well, take a look at it again. Were you in Canada? Yeah. I didn't realize what would happen. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's popped up left side. That's playable. Hardy. 
Okay. We'll go to the bottom of the ninth. Pierce, Adam Jones, Nelson Cruz, just like Abner designed it. Off to Toronto for a four spot for returning home with the Angels. And then the off day on July 3rd, and Seattle comes to town. We've got a new pitcher, and it is Ronald Belisario. Three and three. On for the 32nd time. He's seven out of ten in save opportunities. Alejandro Diaz checks in the game defensively in left field. Though the toughest three outs in a game. Steve Pierce, Adam Jones, Nelson Cruz. Pierce has faced Bella one time and he's over one. He's 0 for 3 tonight with a walk. That coming back in the first inning and he scored. Last time up in the sixth. He took Eaton right up against that 4 10 sign in the center field. First pitch strike right there. And they hopefully be the best pitch he gets in the whole sequence. Good fastball at 94 on the inner third. And count nothing in two. Territory, he most likely would have had it. Tyler wants it low and away, and that one just hangs on the inner portion and well fouled. Good job. 
by Pauly. Time on the board. Here's hit the daylights out of this one, and when it left the bat, it looked like two. Adam got to it in a hurry, and fortunately, Pierce had to put the brakes on because that throw got away. He could have coasted in the second, but he'd already stopped. It's never easy, and when you're the manager, you can pull all the right strings, pull all the right numbers, and then it comes up to can your guys execute. Here's Adam. Two for four with a rocket two on one. Takes first pitch strike. First time he's ever faced. Stella. Thirty three homers, one hundred eight knocked in. Only grounded into four double plays this year. And that hit him. And that's not good. So the first two men aboard. Had to go inside with a fastball, and unfortunately. That was way inside. And like Jones, Cruz has never faced Bosar. Now you have a more inviting double play target, and Cruz, if he can hit the ball on the ground. And Chris Davis has come out on deck. Thirty-one. Most of them on their feet. Last pitch, a perfect spot. Usually, a hitter will take that because you can't do anything with it. Count one and two. One and two with three pitches out of the zone. Side corner, perfect spot for it. That'll bring up the left-handed slugger of this team who did not start and is pinch hitting for the first time. Chris Davis. Last year, 286, 53 homers, 138 driven in. Now he has faced Belisario once and he does have a hit. First pitch strike. He took it right down the middle also. We're pinch hitting, very limited action. Four for 12. Nice block. Well, that was a terrific play by Tyler Flowers, and before it's over, it could turn out to be a game saver. Because if that one gets by, it's going to be the tying and winning runs in scoring position. And he was able to corral this by keeping his elbows in. And he didn't let it get by. Him. Well, 
A ball and two strikes. I like to keep it upstairs on Davis. I believe with that uppercut swing. I believe it. They want it up there. And he just flips the bat and fouls it off. That ball is a good six inches off the plate. Two. I wouldn't even mess around with anything down low, trying to trick him. Like no, you try to trick him with the backdoor slider, but you're better off with a face-high fastball. He's pretty much in swing mode at this point. And a full count. JJ Hardy on deck. Fastball, and he can't help it. And this ball game is over. He threw him a slider, and he caught up to it. Six to three, Chris Davis, our GMC professional grade player of the game. So, for my partner Steve Stone, our director Jim Anger, our producer Mike Leary, our associate producer Dave Ross, our technical manager Mark Harper, also for the mayor Mean Joe Groove, and the executive producer Jim Cornell Jr. And for Eric, Dave, Brian, and Sheldon, this is the Hawks along, everybody. Coming up next, Subaru Post Game Live with Chuck and Bill. You've been watching Chicago White Sox baseball on Comcast Sportsnet.